Ahoy! Welcome to episode 20 of season 2 of Bottom of the Stream. Episode 20, nearly there, we've only got five weeks left. I don't know what's happened. I don't, this season has flown by. I know. Absolutely flown by, it's mental. I'm Nick. I'm Adam. And this Bottom of the Stream. It is. We're looking for those uh, hidden gems in Netflix. Yeah. On In the stream, as it were. <laughs> Hence the title of the show. Hence the title of the show, that's what we're all about. How are you? I'm very good. Yeah. Chilly? Yeah, it's a bit cold today, isn't it? I've only got a t-shirt on as well. It's a bit of an error. <laughs> rookie mistake it's because i've sprung on you you're not pre- you are you're not prepped the heating's usually really warm in here but it's not tonight what should we talk about should i do the social yes always a good place to start always good isn't it so follow us on twitter that's where we do most of our updating it's bots underscore podcast instagram is the same where you get some nice little pretty pictures every week uh, facebook.com slash bottom of the stream the website is www.bottomofthestream.com where you'll find every episode we've ever recorded on both season stream tables and the email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com and Patreon. I always nearly forget about Patreon, which oh, is don't one of the that. most important ones. Um, yeah, follow us on Patreon, patreon.com, patreon.com slash bottom of the stream, where you can like support the show by like, giving us a little bit of money every week, every month, and getting some cool shit for it. Yeah, we um, we sent a newsletter. Yes, that's it's going gone. out. Has it gone? It's, got, it's not gone yet, but it's we going We should be having this chat point. off mic, really. <laughs> It is ready it's, to go. It just hasn't gone yet. Yeah, the first issue of the bottom of the stream newsletter is ready to go. Yes, I might do that tonight. Actually, get that out of there. Awesome. One, yeah. of, one of the many little bonuses for you. Got a mini Patreon. episode coming tomorrow for the well, what would, would it be last week now? But it's very confusing this time travel. I know. <laughs> time traveling confuses. It's me. all happening. Yeah. So yeah, www dot bottom of the stream. No, www dot patreon dot com slash bottom of the stream where you can support the show if you want to financially. If you can't support us financially, then drop us a review on Apple Podcasts yeah. or Podchaser, where you will be able to rate and review the show. It all helps. It really does. Puts it in front of people's eyes. Yeah. And it is. It makes us feel good too. That's the socials done, I think. I might drop a little promo for somebody else in here. Welcome to the Movie Cellar, where we have a VHS collection. So many fucking VHS tapes. An internet connection. It's acceptable. And extremely uninformed opinions. That you're kind of understating it. My name's Dan. I'm George. And I'm producer Chris. George, I really liked your interjections there. Yeah, it was a good Um, back and forth. So we're cutting a promo, so we should probably tell people what the fuck we do. Yeah, what do we do, producer Chris? What do you produce? We are a podcast that watches VHS tapes in alphabetical order. Yeah, man. That's basically it. We start the show with two movies on board from a certain letter of the alphabet. We flip a coin between them, take a brief intermission while we watch it, and then we come back and we talk about it. This one's way more boring. Nah, like, this I one sounds this really good. good. This makes us sound like we know what the fuck we're doing. We don't. It's uninformed, man. Oh, yeah. shit. We're out of we're time. We're out of time. Bye. If I didn't, then they didn't do it. If I did, they're really good. <laughs> Go and listen to it. Should we start with Netflix news? Yeah. Go on, I know you've got a bit. I've got a little bit of Netflix news, which ties in also into the top of the stream. Seamless. Seamless link. Uh, yeah, I read earlier this week that Adam Sandler's been signed up for four new Netflix movies. I know, he's a he's a movie producing, starring machine. He is at the minute. Guy. So he, he had a real real success with that one earlier last year. Uh, Murder Mystery. Yeah, that was really successful. We got more views than The Irishman. Yeah, oh, it was ridiculously successful for netflix's way of counting i think more recently uncut gems came out yep. where everybody's gone wild for i watched it on friday night what do you think hated every single second no it's awful well <laughs> i haven't watched it yet but I, you you would it, appear to be in the minority I, very much so and i don't really know why <laughs> it's lots of loud brash americans shouting at the same time as everybody else for an hour and a half really okay. didn't enjoy it i will didn't get it at all I'll wait till i've seen it but is it, was he not good I've, he's, yeah, he's supposed to be great isn't it it's a good performance but he just shouts a lot it's not an oscar worthy performance not not a chance interesting I'm not having it not having, and i've got i have got something against adam sandler as we know i don't like him but this is a serious role so i took it as i'm gonna watch a serious do movie not, do you not enjoy the story the no nope. okay <laughs> honestly i didn't enjoy a minute of it Huh? Not a single second of it. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to those four other movies that he's about to make. <laughs> if I'd known you were going to watch Uncut Gems, I could have prepped. I could Sorry, have, I could have well, you can it. watch it now and That's fine. go in with my uh, thoughts in mind. Okay, I bet I'll love it. Something that I did watch, seamlessly going into the top of the stream stuff, I did watch The Stranger. Okay. Have you heard of that? It's Yes. 
it's it's like a British it's a British, British production. Yeah, it's like an ITV Sunday night drama, but somehow Netflix have picked it up and made it popular. I don't really know how they've done it, but it is excellent. I watched all of it over the weekend. I think there's ten, eight or really? ten episodes. Binged the whole thing. Couldn't stop it. It's really, really good. It's got Jennifer Saunders is in it briefly. Yeah, yeah. I see. I watched the trailer the other day. That's good. It's, it's, it's really good. good. It's so addictive. You just can't turn it off. There's so many different story arks going at the same time. Is it like time. a whodunit type yeah, thing? Yeah, that's okay. exactly what it is. It's an ITV police drama. Somehow it's ended up on Netflix. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, there's so many different story arcs going all at the same time and how it all comes together at the end. Awesome. Really clever. Really enjoyed it. It's not my sort of thing normally. I don't usually go for crime dramas. For some reason, it just struck a chord with me. Enjoyed it. Well, as you know, I have always got my finger on the pulse of what's cool <laughs> and oh, awesome absolutely. on Netflix. So I watched a couple of episodes of Next in Fashion. Oh, right. What's that? <laughs> it's a uh, it's basically a reality elimination fashion design show. Right. Um, and it's presented by Tan France from Queer Eye. Oh, yeah. And Alexa Chung of oh, really? T4. And... <laughs> Off of the 90s? Yeah. Well, 2000. 2000. Yeah, um, 2000. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Good yeah. laugh. Yeah, if you're into that sort of thing. That's... I'm not, but will I enjoy it? No. Okay. Right, Probably I'll... not. <laughs> uh, and then I also have finished The Good Place. Yeah, I finished The Good Place too. We we don't talk about The Good Place so enough. Come to an end. Because it's periodic. It comes out every week. We don't talk about it enough. No. Yeah. Well, then that's because we tend to sort of stack up three or four episodes and then... Yeah. Which which it's, what we've just done. It's a real shame. I'm really going to miss it. Uh, so I, I've been quite critical of this Me final series, Me but too. I think this last batch, so this they came out of three or four episodes. Yeah. I thought they, they did a good job of uh, they brought it bringing back, it back they? around. They definitely think, brought it back. The last episode is so emotional. Uh, it's really good. Really good. I, I I think they gave everyone a good goodbye. Yeah, and, I think um, so. I think it's a nice and fitting end to the show, I t- especially uh, for Ted Danson's character. Yes, definitely. That was nice, wasn't it? Really good. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Um, uh, Project Horseman also released its final episodes. Okay, yeah. I've not, I have caught up with those two those episodes now, but I've not watched all of them yet. Right. But I've enjoyed them so far. Which I've not. I've I've got a really weird history with BoJack Horseman. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are awful yeah it's just a strange show but so i'm it's quite miss a, it when it's gone quite a quirk of fate those both ending at the same time. yes yeah, two important. of netflix biggest shows so yeah so the good, ended on the, same the good places had never had a home over here in the uk no and, until netflix bought it in so yeah I know it's a network show in in the states but yeah that was the only way to see it over here yeah it and was. uh yeah it's one of the reasons it's got Netflix, <laughs> to be honest. Honestly, it was the very first thing I ever watched on Netflix. Oh, really? Because well, I go. don't know if you saw yesterday, Netflix did a tweet to show you how you can find a list of everything you've ever watched on Netflix. Oh, no. I retweeted it on our, our account. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> um, so basically, if you log in on your mobile phone app and go to your account section, right. there's a viewing history button. Ah, and see. then you can click download all and it gives you like an Excel file of everything you've ever watched wow. and on which date you've watched it. So you can see how much stuff, how many things you've watched and also what the first thing you ever watched was. That's impressive and a bit scary. And I did mine and yours. Okay. Because I know your Netflix login. Yeah. And I've watched 722 things. Yeah. And the first one was The Good Place. Yeah. You've watched 1,684 things. Yeah. And the first thing was The Good Place. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and we both joined on the same day. So I, I will you, point out, I have four people in my you house. You live in a house of four, and I live in a house of one. So <laughs> that may account for the uh, yeah. larger numbers. So we, like we said recently, we are we were late to Netflix. It was December 2018 we joined. Okay. So, And then the podcast started in April yeah. 2019. So we were straight on it. Uh, the Open House, which was the very first episode we watched, we actually watched in February. We did get, I do, rem- I do <laughs> we remember well we, we had, we had a lot of four planning. or five episodes in the bag yeah, before we, had, we yeah, released yeah. the first one. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was really interesting. So if you want to do that, just log into your account, go on the View in History and click Download All and it will show you exactly everything you've ever watched on Netflix in order. Oh, wow. It's really interesting. Go out it and shows, have a look and you know tweet what, us, let us know. when I was watching Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yes. I did all of that in a month. That's to the day. Impressive. <laughs> so it was crazy. Yeah, I was watching, look, reading through it all. Was time. that literally all of it? There was no yeah, gaps there was in between? No, it was hardly anything. Doom. It was literally just was in order. There was a couple of things in the middle, but nothing major. It was really interesting. You should mm. do it. Uh, yeah, we'll have a look at that. There's lots of kids' things on your on Yeah, your I'm list. sure. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? No, I think that's it for me. Mm, yeah, I can't think of anything else. No. I haven't watched anything else because I've watched all of The Stranger and it took me ages. So shall we talk about the film? Yeah, let's do it. So, this week, 
out of the randomizing app came a film called He's Out There, which is a film from 2018, is a 15, is only on for an hour and 29 minutes, and is currently rated at 5.2 on IMDb. Okay. Uh, stars Yvonne Strahovski, plays a character called Laura. Yes, she's a familiar name. Yep, you will know, I know her mainly as being Hannah McKay and Dexter. Yeah. She came in towards the end of the show, didn't she? In, well, not in the good point where Dexter was good. <laughs> she <laughs> was the shark had been seasons. jumped. Very much so. And she was also in 91 episodes of Chuck. I never yeah, I never, Chuck. I never really watched Chuck. No, I never got into it. But more recently, she's in The Hands Made, Handmaid's Tale. Okay, yeah. So I've never seen that either. Battlestar Galactica. She's very famous yeah. for that, I think, as well. Yeah, so she's been in quite a lot of things. I, I didn't do any research on the kids because I always find that weird. And they <laughs> okay, had been doing a lot of stuff anyway. Um, the guy who played the masked man was called Ryan McDonald. And he was in 20 episodes of Fringe. Do you remember Fringe? Yeah, I, d- I think I watched most of the first series of Fringe. And I don't think I ever went back. I, although I would quite like to. I persevered with Fringe. I did get to the end. And it is it completely goes insane. The last two or three series. Yeah. Like, batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely batshit crazy. When it starts being like alternative universes and all that sort of stuff. I remember when it was good. I really enjoyed it. Then it was good. It was really yeah. good. It was really, really good. Yeah, check out Fringe. It's interesting. I'm not sure if it's not Netflix. It seems like the sort of thing that would be. Oh, I don't know where you I can find Fringe. I'll, I'll do some research. I'll let you know. We'll tweet it. Director. This now, is an interesting story. This is an story. interesting story here. You know, do you want to go through it? Uh, I, I'm doing it from memory. Okay. <laughs> we'll say, give, so throw me the name The first. director who is credited on the film is a guy called Quinn Lasher. Sounds like a made-up name. It, Appears to be a made-up name. Yeah. The original, the person who actually directed the film is called Dennis Iliadis. I believe so. He's Greek. He's Greek. Well, I think he that's a good pronunciation. The Last House on the Left or The House on Haunted Hill. One I think, of no, I think it was the last, house. last House on the Left. Yeah. He directed that, but appears to have completely distanced himself from this film. Yeah. And had his name taken off the credits and put a fake name on it. So we did find one article on this. Yeah. And did. and essentially that's what it said. Yeah. But there was no reason as to why he'd distance himself from this yeah. or what creatively had caused this breakup yeah it's um, really strange but the, yeah the director is credited as quinn lasher quinn lasher which who doesn't appear to be a real person no he's not is not a real person no and he has this one credit on imdb and nothing else on there it's a really weird story yeah yeah so it, I'd, i would i'd be interested to find out what happened there yeah it got me it got me interested i must admit but it doesn't appear like he's ever done any like stories or interviews into why he's done it. Oh, creative differences. I can only as- I can only assume. Quinn only assume. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I know you didn't do that on purpose. I didn't, but it was I really didn't good at fun. all. <laughs> um, he's out there. Do you have a one word review of it? Mean. Mean. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll let you have that. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Where do we start? With a bit of well, at first I thought it was a poem. I agree, I did as well. I've written here, kid reading a poem. But it wasn't a poem. No, nope. it was a child doing a voiceover, reading part of a storybook. Yeah, uh, which I think was poetic. Well, yeah, it, it is in right. that sort of <laughs> verse, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and as the voiceover is going on, we are sort of scanning over a crash car. Yeah, it looks like the aftermath of something. A bloody weapon a of some sort. <laughs> yeah. a, couple, um, a couple of damaged cars. And, yeah. Yeah. But the sun's out, and mm. it's kind of a, a nice day. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It was the after, the mor- clearly the morning after something had happened. Yes. And then we kind of, I guess, flash back from there, and we're in a city. I can only issue. I don't really know what city it was. Was it New York? Uh, I, it's just... It's a, a city. It looked a, a bit city. like New York. Yeah. And there's a, a lady who we now know is called Laura, and she is packing up her car with her two children and some belongings, and they're going to their lake house. Uh, appear to be going for a weekend away. Uh, the husband is there, but he's not going with them. He's going to follow later on after he's finished doing whatever the fuck he's doing. Yeah, so the husband's Sean, and they kind of have a little, not argument, but there's a couple of pointed, yeah, a, a bit not, of a I pointed she's conversation. Happy about him yeah, so he's going he's basically them. having to go to work when he should, should be, be going, on holiday. going with them. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to follow in a few hours, is basically what's happening. Yeah. So she leaves, and we get a bit of a, a driving montage of. Dro- there's a lot of drone shots in this film yeah there is. There I love, really I love is. A, drive, a drone shot and so it's like driving drone shots but it's also cut in with the title card which is basically scenes from this book that these yeah, kids the illustrations from illustrations this from this book and a nursery rhyme is playing over the top yes and well, we've got your first sort of trope of yeah it's it, creepy a, a nursery rhyme being slowed down a bit to make it creepy yeah it was knickknack paddywhack <laughs> it was and it was creepy as fuck
soon after this montage is finished playing, they arrive at their lake house and the gate is all locked up and the key doesn't work. She's got a, like a padlock key and she can't get it to work. And a, a kindly man shows up. I, this was the first point at which I was confused. Yeah. Because, and this relates to several <laughs> questions that came up through this film. Yeah. So this is the family's holiday home. Yeah. Lake house, whatever you want to call it. They've obviously been there before. Yeah. Several times. So I would imagine so. Uh, well, you know, they are because yeah. late, when they get into the house in a couple of minutes, there's photographs of them yeah. everywhere. They definitely own this house. And she seems surprised that there's a lock on it. Yeah. And then a guy turns up who she's never met before. Who says he's the neighbour. Who says he's the neighbour, Owen. And he's, and he's lived there all his life. Yeah. And before he introduces himself, <laughs> the very first thing he says is, oh, another family used to live here. That was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on that because it was stupid. And uh, they lost a kid. Yeah, he just, this kid just went missing. Yeah, I'd never seen him again. Oh, we never seen him again. So how has this never come up before if they've been going I here years? I couldn't agree more. And also, th- this guy's definitely the killer. <laughs> we know we're watching a horror film. You've already told us now what's happened. Yeah. So like, come on. It, it was like this guy's either a terribly, uh, the worst and most obvious red herring ever. Yeah. Or he's the killer. Yeah. That's that's it. That's uh, the only two options. Oh, there used to be a, a kid who lives here and now he's not here anymore. Yeah. Captain Exposition again. It completely. That's all he was there for. He, and, he comes back later on, but not for very long. There's so many more ways you could have done this. Yeah. Why, why? It's just so lazy. Uh, if I was going to give a one word review, it probably would be lazy or just cheap. It's just yeah. so many shortcuts this takes. Yeah. It's just paint by numbers. It's a paint by numbers slasher film. Yeah. But it's got a bit of charm to it. We'll get to it, I guess. But I, I just can't believe it. Yeah, it's just it was basically no people. I'm, again, I say this before. We're not asking for like total realism no. here, but absolutely no one in real life talks acts like or talks like this. A guy just comes up. Oh yeah, this is a, never met you the before, Mrs. Next door neighbour. Oh uh, yeah, did you know the old oh, whoever John. they are Smith family <laughs> used to live here and their, their kid John went missing. <laughs> oh, by the way, my name is. If somebody came up to me and told me that. I'd be like, right, I'm going home. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen horror films. I'm going home. I'm not going in that house. But, and she doesn't go. I'm oh, sorry. Are you new? No, we've been coming here for years. She doesn't, and she doesn't. And she kind well, of asks never met him you, more questions about before? this guy, and she's like, Ugh. "It did throw me a little bit." I was like, oh, "Come on, yeah, it was. It was a bit cheap. It's not that. a good start." But he manages to get the gate unlocked for them because he just bangs the padlock on the post a bit. Strong man. The, ga- the, ga- the gate just opens. Oh, and then you get it again because just as she drives through the gate, the car, the camera kind of zooms in on the gate post. And it's got John etched on it. Yeah. And you're like, come on. Yeah, you've never seen really? that. Really? Yeah. Might as well just call him Jason and be done with it. And so she's parked up and the kids get out and they're kind of running around. And the dad calls, what's his name? Sean. Sean, yeah. He calls her and he says, oh, look, I'm running behind. I'm going to be there by 11 o'clock. Stay up. I'll be there by 11. Yeah. Basically what he says to her. And there's a really weird, like, washed out filter over the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. So th- this whole thing is filmed or well, it's been bleached out basically Complete, like really badly as well and like, i don't know no why color. <laughs> it's just no, like cause whole... this picturesque yeah so like just lake house. It all out. the woods you know there's loads of, loads of stuff in the woods and the whole thing's just bleached yeah and now i don't i just i don't understand it uh, it really threw me i was like i don't like I've... the look of this one. no it looked <laughs> i didn't like the look but of it either it didn't have it all the way through but it was definitely not full color at uh, any point it, it so it definitely had it in all the daylight scenes, yeah. And then obviously when they're running when around, they don't in the, notice it as much in yeah. the dark, yeah. Or they didn't bother putting it on. I don't know. Yeah. But I thought it was a really odd artistic choice. Yeah, it was. It was maybe that's why the director walked away. He was like, why "Bleach you... my fucking film. <laughs> I'm walking. Bleach it. <laughs> or don't bleach it. Or I'm walking." So the girls go out and they start playing on the swings. Yeah. So uh, just the the dad's buying them presents, isn't he? Yeah. Basically, so he's stopped for gas while he's calling them. Yeah. And he's yeah he's buying makeup presents. Yeah, but, he's, but he's like a makeup box, and yeah, but he's doing like a Chandler in Friends, isn't he? He's on to buy all his presents from the gas station. Yeah. So <laughs> he got better presents than Chandler. Yeah, um, but while the girls are playing on this swing, they notice a red string tied to a log, which is a bit strange. Th- these girls are young. What, what would you say? I reckon you've got about eight and five. Uh, no, I'd, I'd say put the older one about sort of ten-ish. Oh, really? Yeah, and the, and the younger yeah, one maybe. sort of six, seven. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're the expert in that, that range. Okay. So I'll take your word on it. Uh, yeah, so they follow this red string and they kind, they kind of follow it through the woods. Yeah. Laura notices that they're not there anymore because she's looking out the window watching them. But it's it's all right because they're suddenly on the porch. 
they're not following this string anymore. They just appear at the door. Yeah. One, so they, they head upstairs because she's like, go, go and get ready for bed. I don't know what time it is. It feels early evening. Yeah, well, she's because she's under get go and get ready for her, getting all your things. And then, we'll, then we'll go downstairs and have dinner. And have dinner, yeah. So, but while yeah. she's doing that, one girl hides something in a drawer. Yeah, the older girl, Kayla, and the mom spots it, and she's yeah. like, "What are you hiding in the drawer?" And she's like, oh, "It's just a present for daddy when he gets it." So they kind of leave it, and they head back downstairs, and Laura starts reading a bedtime story to the kids. It's the same story. It's the same story. Yeah, it's the same poem book from earlier, but somebody's drawn a picture inside the book of two people on a swing with somebody standing behind them i think the older girl says it was the younger one that must have done it yeah they're like crude yeah like a real like a drawing yeah but both the girls i didn't get them to understand that either yeah <laughs> we'll come on to it later because i don't want to give it all away now but i have a big issue with when that drawing was done, was done. yeah i know what you mean <laughs> um but the girls seem really distracted at this point they're they're not really interested one of the girls even asks if she can go to bed yeah she's not feeling great i don't think and that's the younger one. Yeah, Maddie. And the, and the dad calls again. The Sean calls again. And he says, look, I'm still a couple of hours away. I'm not here. I'm, I'm still on my way. Don't worry. Basically, important, basically just checking. So there's an important point here. He yeah. rings the house phone. Yes. Because uh, Laura has left her mobile phone in the car. She, deliberately. Because <laughs> did you see when she put it down? She just threw it back in yeah. the same place. Yeah. she's uh, And she never goes to pick it up. That really annoys me. It takes her ages yeah, before she goes out. and re- She knows she hasn't got it. Yeah. She just takes her ages to go and pick it up. And... As she's on the phone, we then switch our sort of point of view to yeah, looking, looking out, out from the, the woods. Yeah. And there's a bit of sort of crackling of twigs yeah. and some heavy breathing. I've written, can she see someone in the woods? Question mark. <laughs> Cause I, mm. I don't think she could. No, she, I don't I think, think she, she thinks she could. There was definitely something out there that distracted her eyes. Okay. I think you might be giving it too much credit, but maybe, <laughs> maybe. Not long after that, one of the girls... Oh, Laura falls asleep at that point. Yeah. Even though the... Dad said I'm coming at 11, yeah. don't go And to she bed. said about four well, times, I'm waiting. I'll wait for you. She's fast asleep to the point where the kid wakes her up and she hasn't got a clue where she is. Yeah. She's like completely out of it. And the kid, Kayla says there's something wrong with Maddie. Yeah. So she obviously runs into the room, finds Maddie, and Maddie just throws up all over the floor. So there is something wrong with Maddie. Kid was right. She is not well. Yeah. Then she starts choking. Or they get her to a bathroom, don't they? And she starts choking on something. Yeah. So it's like, is she panicking a bit? Yeah. What's she's happening? trying to. She's got a hand in her mouth, trying yeah. to, as if she's trying to pull something out of her throat. So Laura like grabs this thing, and I think was it a leaf? I thought it was a bit of ribbon. It, yeah. It was something. It was like a green, something green and cut. I, I, I almost thought it was um like some edging, like like a hem, like you'd, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. a bit of ribbon, a bit of material. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't very big. And I'm not saying. <laughs> That she wouldn't have felt it and be choking. Yeah. But it's not like she was a magician pulling out like a load of <laughs> ribbons. <laughs> ribbons, out of her ribbons. Mouth. <laughs> yeah. This is like a tiny little piece of material. Yeah. And it got the word hello written on it. Yeah. Which was a bit oh, weird. It was a bit creepy. It was creepy. It was very creepy. And that so you can you'd get a flashback then of the when they were following the string earlier in the day. Yes. And you find out what they actually found and they found like a tea party in the woods. Yeah, so there's a, the table's been made out of a Tree stump. Tree, tree stump. Yeah. Uh, and then there's there's it's like stools all, stools around, all it. around it. And and some cupcakes, cupcakes. And some cups of tea and things on it. Yeah. And it's a bit weird. And the kids kind of look at it a bit tentatively to start with. But Maddie's straight in there. She just necks this cupcake. Yeah. What bad down in one. Yeah. But the other one didn't. Kayla keeps her cupcake and put that's what she was putting in the drawer to keep for her dad later on so laura realizes this straight away pretty much they, they kind of tell her what happened don't they yeah yeah so she runs upstairs to the drawer, drawer gets, gets the cupcake, the cupcake. digs her hands in it and it's all like green and gloopy inside yeah. it was weird and they had got another bit of ribbon in with the word goodbye written on it so i have a question go on is this meant to <laughs> again maybe giving it too much credit everything is so like basic in this film yes was, basic's a was, great one word review yeah was was the green supposed to be poison possibly and did goodbye mean if you ate this one you'd, you'd have died you'd have died so obviously she ate the hello one and she's not very well she's not in a good way at all really but not most very of the well. rest of the film yeah but do you, was i supposed to take that from it do you think or i don't know were they equally as bad or? it didn't look very nice inside it was all no. slimy and loopy maybe i'm giving it too much credit. maybe you are. i don't, I don't know, know. It, it didn't get eaten so we'll never know yeah. it's not something we'll ever know and then suddenly they hear the standard movie trope of banging noises upstairs footsteps slash clanging, clanging yeah all going on and the phone's not working 
the no, house phone. phone. Is no, he's not disconnected. Because Laura's yeah. still not been outside to get her mobile phone, even though she's alone in the woods. People with two in girls. these movies never learn, do they? <laughs> so she she grabs a knife, and I've written here: her mobile is still in the car, and underline the word "still." <laughs> <laughs> um, but at this point she thinks I know what I need I need my mobile phone yep. so she heads outside against much protest from the kids who do not want her to go outside because they just scream and scream all the way through this film yeah, they, do. they never stop there's a lot of screaming there is a lot of screaming but she heads out there anyway but the phone isn't in the car where she left it oh we've not mentioned the kids doll yeah I've got questions about this as well. <laughs> go on so at the start of this film just correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong. At the start of the film, I don't know if it's when they're at home or when they get to the cabin, there's this little doll. Yeah. Which, I don't know whether one of the girls made it or whether they found it on a previous visit. Yeah. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be telling me. But <laughs> it's, it's got like a handmade drawn face on it. Yeah. And it's a handmade doll. So I I don't know what if this is. This is trying to tell me the, it's one of something that John made and they found on a previous visit. Because dolls do come up later Yeah. On. Or if the girls had made it at home. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, there's another one in the back of the car. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or is it the same one? I don't know. <laughs> there's is it the same people. one he's taken and wrapped it? Is it a different one to match the other first one? I have no idea. Because the doll was in the lake house yeah. at one point. It was also in the city street when they were originally getting in the car. It was there. So they it must have. There. So they either did make it or... Or they found it on a previous it. visit. Yeah. And then... But now it's wrapped up in the back of the car in like wrapping paper. Or he's made another one because there's two girls. Possibly. I have no idea. I don't know. It is clear as mud. <laughs> Absolute. Either that or this doll's moving on its own. Yeah. I don't know. But it's creepy as fuck. It's horrible. It's got like a drawn on face. It's not a nice looking thing. But yeah, anyway, she finds it in the back of this car all wrapped up. So she goes back into the house to collect the kids because she's like, we're going to leave now. Yes. And we're done. We're getting out of here. As they're getting in the car, the, the window explodes or the rear, something the glass went off. Was it the so back Someone's throwing a rock car? at it, basically. Yeah, someone's throwing a yeah. rock at the window. So they, they kind of run off and they get in the car and she hits it into reverse because they need to go backwards to get up the drive. And so she's driving backwards and all of a sudden... Oh, this really made me laugh. <laughs> I actually laughed out loud. All of the wheels fell off the car. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's all of them. Like they're driving this clown car <laughs> <laughs> the circus. <laughs> and it just broke... Oh, it, broke, it broke me. It broke any tension. It did. It looked and really they rolled, janky. They rolled off down there. <laughs> they just, yeah. Um, but it always looked like it was going to tip over. Yeah. But it never did. And then they were, ended up in were hitting a tree, didn't they? And got, <laughs> got out. But this was what we'd seen earlier. Yeah. So the aftermath of that is what we'd seen yeah, earlier at this, the beginning this of the car event. in the verge. Yeah. Stuck up a verge with no wheels on it. Can we also talk about the laughing? <laughs> yeah. So this is the first time in this movie, basically at, at points when they're being chased or stalked there's a laughing sound yeah what did you make of that it was a bit odd it were they <laughs> supposed to be hearing it i don't was it just in the soundtrack i don't know they never acknowledge it no, no. so it's, it's basically like a creepy it's the sound of a creepy kid laughing. laughing like they are and obviously the thing is that you know this this masked guy is is playing with these you know they're yeah. like they're his, they're his prey well, they're his plaything yeah, no that's exactly what's happening. uh well you've already mentioned him so that's why yeah. and um i credit him yeah of john <laughs> and um yeah so every time there's a scene like this a chase scene or, or whatever there's this giggling child yeah. laughing but it doesn't sound anything like him no or the two girls what's going on i don't know what is going on i don't know it's a bit weird so anyway after the wheels fall off the car like a clown car they all run back into the house and kind of lock themselves in and they head to the kitchen. And Maddie's got a rash on her neck and she's not breathing well at all. She They keep saying, breathe, take deep breaths, but she can't. So <laughs> Laura's like, I've got some pills upstairs. Yeah. They'll work. I've got pills that will cure rashes and being unable to breathe. She heads back upstairs. The kids are screaming again because they don't want it to leave yep. again. These kids did a lot of screaming in this film. They did. How, these kids are young as well. They're like, how do you get kid actors to work in these sort of films? It's I know. So it's just like, for them. Yeah. It must be quite a traumatic. Because when the guy does turn up, it is quite full on. Yeah, we'll come to it. Yeah, we it will. is a good mask. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. It's pretty scary. <laughs> uh, anyway, she runs upstairs to get the pills and she heads back down to the kitchen. Well, she drops half the pills down the sink <laughs> yeah, first. Because that's what you do in a film when you yeah. pick up a bottle of pills. Everybody always does. Yeah, yeah. you've seen it hundreds, hundreds of, times. of times. So she, she managed to rescue like the last couple Two. of tablets. Yeah. yeah. So she crushes them up and puts them in some water and Maddie drinks it down. And she seems to be miraculously cured after that. She's still a bit ill, but nowhere near as bad as she was. 
it would be fair to say she shakes off <laughs> the illness from here on in. She does indeed. Seemingly. Um, and then they hear some more banging and some more knocking, and it's the it's like the patio doors to the house. Yeah, I was like, like leads the double, out onto the lake. Yeah, the big windows. Big double windows. So, and it's going on for ages, and the kids are screaming again. And Laura's kind of slowly walking up towards them to kind of investigate what's going on. And she pulls back the curtains. And is, was it stuck to the window, or was somebody holding it up to the window? Stuck to the window with tape on the outside. There's a family photo of them. Yeah, still in the frame. Still in the frame. So, go on, tell us, <laughs> say what's in the frame so first. The, eye, the faces are scratched off of Sean yes. and both the girls. Yeah. But Laura's face is intact. But, like you said, it's still in the frame. So, the killer... Yeah. Has gone to the effort yeah. of <laughs> taking the photo yeah. at some point, yeah. taking it out of the frame, yeah. scratching the faces off, yeah. putting it back in the frame, <laughs> yeah. glass and everything, yeah. and then taping it to the outside of the window. Which you could have just taped the photo then. Yeah. I mean, arts and crafts, you know. I'd also question why Laura's face wasn't scratched off. But the that, were. So, yeah, so that bears no resemblance. I'm not giving a spoiler here. That bears, bears no uh, relevance to what happens in this movie. It doesn't, because I thought, well, obviously he's got he's obsessed with her, yeah. and he wants to take out the rest of the family, but that's not what he does. No. So we'll move on. <laughs> Maddie all of a sudden throws up again. They're like, they're kind of the kids are kind of screaming now for their dad. They're, they're the back up in a bedroom the, at this yeah, point. Yeah. Kayla doesn't want to leave anywhere. She's like, I'm staying here now. I'm done. She's like, well, your dad will be here in a minute. And she's like, oh, he's already here. He's standing under the tree outside. Look. So she looks out. Laura goes to look out the window and there's a shadowy man out there. Yeah. Just And he just waves. Yeah. It's, like, it's really weird. And he's standing under the tree. And then the camera pans across yeah. to the book, yeah. which is on the nightstand. Yeah. And on the spine of the book <laughs> is scratched the name John. Yes. Same as it was in the gate post. Yeah. Why haven't they spotted that before? Yeah. If they say earlier on that this is the first time this year they've had a chance to get to the lake house. Yeah. So even if that book came from the house originally. Why are they taking it back? Which it must have done. Yeah. Well, yeah, but kids, you know, I really like this book. It's the only book I want to read. Yeah. So they've had it for a, a year. Yeah. And they've never noticed it's got this John guy's written on it. Dave on it. Unless it didn't have before and he's scratched, scratched it on since they've been He's back. not been in the house yet. No. Not that we know of. Oh, I don't anyway at this point sean does show up and he's he's kind of at the gate outside because somebody's locked it back up it's again. been locked again because yeah. even though laura told him she'd leave it open for yeah. him earlier this time he finds a piece of red string tied to the gate he tries to call laura at one point he does she's still not answering so on the on the end of the string there's a little note and it just says follow me yeah so he thinks somebody does answer the phone and it's just somebody heavy breathing down the phone at him so he follows the string and he's he really doesn't want to it's like 11 o'clock at night no he's not up for it he's just driven all night he even says, doesn't he, oh, come on. Yeah, if you're pranking me, I'm not up for it. Let's do it in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Prank me in the morning. But he's just follow the string and he can. he's ringing Laura's phone again. And he can hear the phone ringing. Yeah. Like her phone ringing. So he thinks, oh, she's being down there. He thinks he's being pranked. And somebody answers the phone, but there's nobody there. There's heavy breathing. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. And he gets to the same place that the girls got to, this like tea party area. Yeah. And there's four creepy as fuck <laughs> like life-size dolls yeah but they're like they've got like wooden faces wooden heads so, yeah. yeah um and yeah so they're the crudely homemade fucking horrible family well. basically <laughs> they're, they're creepy as anything and they're sitting around this table the phone laura's phone's on the table it is yeah. so i don't know who answered it and has he kind of he kind of looks off into the distance and you see for the first time you meet the masked man called who is called John. Yeah, he sort of um, emerges out of the woods. This from isn't behind revealed him. to us at this point, but it's pretty obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He kind of emerges out of the woods, and he's got this weird little axe thing. That and then it cuts away. We don't see anything. Does he raise the axe? He does just raise as Sean turns around. Yeah, but then it cuts away. Yeah, cuts you, away. Don't, you don't see him. So we've still not seen anything Sean. happen. No. <laughs> and then we go back to the house, and they they're in the lounge again. They're moving around this house like yeah. I t- in fact, I've even even sort of noted that considering how sick Maddie the little kid yeah. is, they're moving around a hell of a lot. Yeah, why not just she's like jogging one, around herself in a bedroom or she's, something? She's run it off, hasn't she? She has completely run it. She still can't <laughs> breathe properly, but she has run it off. And then suddenly, somebody knocks on the door. They can hear Sean's voice yeah. talking through the door, but it's it sounds weird. It's it's not like he's standing there. No, so it's basically his it's his recording off. Laura's voicemail. Yeah. So when he was just walking through the woods saying, Oh, come on, yeah. stop playing jokes on me. Blah, that's blah, blah. playing. That's what they playing. don't know that though. No, all they, they can do that. is hear is that they can hear his voice. So Laura goes kind of towards the door and she opens the door and her phone's hanging in front of the door from a rope. Yeah. 
<laughs> obviously. And, and he's done a good job because it's a thick rope. Yeah. And he's managed to tie a phone around, around it. And put a little paper note on it as well. Uh, maybe I've not given this guy enough credit for his <laughs> arts and crafts. He can't see very well. Yeah. He's got his mask on. There's also a note on the phone that says, I'm home. It does, yeah. And then suddenly the phone drops. Did she touch it? or No, no. It just dropped nope. on its own. And so the rope starts on coiling and falling and falling and falling. And then all of a sudden, this bit made me laugh. Sean's body just hits the deck in front of her. <laughs> it does, yeah, and, with a thud. Yeah. And so she screams. The kids scream because they've they kind of seen something, but they yeah. didn't see it because they're still in the house. So she she starts crying and she's crawling over the body and she turns it over and he's got no eyes. What do you call a Sean with no eyes? <laughs> Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean with no eyes. Yeah, it's just, he's had his eyes pulled out, which is a really good trick with an axe. Yeah. <laughs> so she realizes straight away what's going on. So she runs into the house to stop the girls going out there because the girls are about to follow her out. So she's like, no, we're not going out. It's not your dad. He's not here yet. Something else is kicking off. Basically just shut up. And then suddenly all the lights go off. Yeah, power's gone. Yeah. Standard horror movie trope number 76. And but it's all right because Laura gets out instantly a flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have to question. I know she's under a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, not a good situation. But I have to question that decision somewhat. Hmm. Instantly giving away your position in the in the house yeah it's not the best move is it and then so they think well what we'll do we'll head outside yeah they're just making a run for it yeah they decide they're going to make a run for it don't they and they get to the swings where they were playing earlier which are just out the back and the creepy dolls are there yeah so the ones that were sat around the 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 big ones that were sat around the tea yeah not the little one the big ones that were sat around the tea party earlier and there's one hanging there's two on the swings yeah one hanging hanging behind them this guy's been busy. He has he been is so fast. busy. He's moving all this stuff around. <laughs> yeah, on his own. Yeah. Oh. He's managed to get Sean on the roof. I know. <laughs> busy boy. But then while they're um, out there, because they're, they're heading, I think they've spotted his car. Yeah. She, she kind of thinks, ah, Sean's, Sean's, Sean, car's if Sean's, Sean's, Sean's dead, dead here. His, his, car's, his car's got to be somewhere. But then stuff starts getting thrown at the car. Uh, at them. Trying eggs. to get it's to the eggs. It's the eggs. I yeah. couldn't make out what it was. So she, uh, Laura, when... When Sean yes, was at the yes, gas station yes, yes. buying the makeup presents, I feel stupid. Laura said, "Can you pick up some eggs? Yeah. It's the only thing I forgot." Yeah. So they're now just being pelted with eggs. Somebody's egging them. Yeah. A bit like um, was that film we watched the other week? Where oh, in the babysitter. Egged. Yeah, the babysitter. They were getting egged. So they're like, "Oh, we don't want to be eggs," and they so they run back in. The... <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been egged? It's horrible. I have been hit with an egg. What? I just, it just made me laugh. We're trying to avoid basically this. <laughs> Jason ripoff. Yeah. I was joking last week when I said I had someone remade Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> and one of the most scared they've been. When despite some start getting chucked yeah, out. Yeah, despite having seen the father and husband yeah. with no eyes drop down in front of them. Maddie nearly choked to death. Yeah. It's the eggs. It's the eggs that are the tipping point. They literally freak the fuck out yeah. and they're like straight back in the house. So every time they go to leave, something stops them and they end up back in the house. Kayla's thinking at this point, oh, I've seen that scene before of the people on the swings. And that's when she goes to grab the book. Yes. And she's like, look, he drew, he's drawn us. What? Okay. <laughs> I've written, yeah, I already got that. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly this, this bit did make me jump. Cause... But, so, um, before you do that, we're talking about the book. So I'm going okay, back to that drawing. The so the drawing that they saw when they were reading earlier. Yeah, it was. When has he done that? I don't know. It, so it must be like the year before or that. Yeah, because he hasn't had a chance to get to the book in the meantime. No. Since they've been back this time. But then doesn't he recreate the whole book? It, well, that's coming so up. coming yeah. up, yeah. So yeah. when does he do that? <laughs> anyway. I, there's a, so many issues here. <laughs> um, it just doesn't make sense. There's a proper jump scene now. Because I on, literally jumped out of my skin now. Because they're all standing around in the kitchen. And suddenly one of those big dolls comes flying through the window. Uh, crashes, I think that did get me actually. Yeah, when proper made me jump. Glass. And it makes them proper jump, and they all run upstairs as quick as they can. Kind of muddy. Uh, muddy. Laura shuts the door, and she's kind of lying on the floor, looking under the door. Yes. And she's like, "We'll just wait here till the morning. Everything will be fine in the morning. Horror movies." Yeah, they barricaded the, the doors up, and yeah. She's like, "Horror movies don't happen in the daytime. It'll be fine by the morning." But then, after about two minutes of that, she's like, "I need to go back downstairs." No, there are. There are. Yes, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting confused. <laughs> they, But the reason she wants to go downstairs is because she finds some eggshell in one of the girl's hair. Yeah. And then that's when she thinks, ah, car keys. Yeah, I'll get the car keys off Sean. Yeah. 
So she does. She heads back down. So where, the why were they going the last time they went out? I think they were just making a run for it. I don't think they were going for his oh, car. Okay. They can't have been. <laughs> they can't have been because they didn't have the keys. So she, she puts the girls in the wardrobe. She's like, stay there. Don't come. She's like, count to 20 yeah. and I'll be back. So she gives them a wristwatch, yeah. which glows and says, right, count along with the second hand. Yeah. I'll be back by the time you get to 20. Yeah. No way. No She's way. not making that run in 20 seconds. Not a chance. So she hides them in the wardrobe, gives them this watch, and she heads back downstairs. And she goes back out to Sean's body, and she kind of frisks him for his car keys. And then it kind of cuts away, and we get a scene back at the front of the house, because mm-hmm. another car pulls up next to Sean's, which is obviously going to be Owen, because he's the only other character that we've met so yes. far. And then it cuts back, and we go back to Laura, who's running back up the stairs, just as the girls get to, like, I think they get to 22 yeah, something like that. It was she was she did well, but now they're upstairs. They can hear somebody downstairs. Yeah, so the yeah someone so really is when now they were downstairs, in the house. They can hear somebody upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> now they're upstairs. They can hear somebody downstairs. And he's approach. You can hear the heavy footsteps coming up the stairs yeah. towards them. Somebody's coming, and then they start hearing this car horn yeah. blaring because the gates are still locked. Yeah. So I mean, he's obviously out there banging his car horn, and then he comes wandering up the drive. Yeah, like and a, the 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 footsteps recede. Recede. Yeah, they kind of go back. Laura starts flashing the flashlight at him. Yeah, Flash- out the window. Yeah, <laughs> I was worried I'd said flashlight, then. <laughs> but I didn't, so we're all good. Um, and he, he wouldn't have of, noticed that. No, he not in the wouldn't. dark. <laughs> and he sees, so he sees, he notices Laura, and she's like banging on the window, like screaming at him, "Help! Help! Help! Get me out of here!" He can't hear a word she's saying. No, this is quite clearly a thin one pane, single pane glass window. Yeah, she's. Oh. Bawling at the top of her voice. Yeah. The two kids are screaming it's as loud as they can. Quiet outside. Yeah. They're in an isolated woodland area. There is no way he wouldn't have been able to hear. He comes across so stupid as well because he's looking up and it's like, what? Yeah. What? What's wrong? What's happening? What's the matter? And then suddenly he gets an axe in the side of his head. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so he's done. It was a bit like a thingy in The Shining. I always think that if somebody's coming up and then they get killed straight away, I always think of Halloran in The Shining. Right. I, I'm going to say this now. Go on. So... There's another film we've watched this year, which this is obviously yeah. comparable to. Yeah. And that film is Hush. Yes. And I'm sure we, when we sum up, we will talk about more a bit about the comparison. Yeah. But can we just briefly consider how they deal with their, here, with, with Owen, who's come as the knight in shining armor. Yeah. Versus when... Um, Sarah's husband turned up. Yeah. In, she in Hush. Yeah, I think it was Sarah. And how well that was done. Yeah. And the and the killer like was a proper person and sort of tried to yeah. trick him and he it had an actual tension to the scene. There's a lot of similarities to Hush. Hush is like the good version of this. And there's no tension to any of this. No. It's like you could have got something out of this. Oh no, he's just got an axe in his head. It's done. It was quite a graphic scene. It was good. It was well done. It just his head caved in like a melon. I know, but I, it took me. The, the, I know I'm joking about the window thing, but it, that genuinely took me out of it. it like, yeah. There's no way he's not going to hear. She her. did break the window just before, didn't she? She smashed the window with her yeah. elbow, and then he, she screamed, "Watch out behind you!" Just as this axe enters the side of his head. Anyway, Owen's dead. That's all we need to know. He has gone. Both men are dead. Sean and Owen are both dead. Suddenly, the lights come back on in the house out of nowhere, and for some reason, the garbage disposal in the sink turns itself on. I don't know if that's a thing when power comes back on in a house. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. She turned the thing off. over. It was it? completely like. But the creepy little doll sitting on the kitchen counter. Yeah. The little one that we met earlier. So where's that come from again? Yeah, he but has been in the house. Yeah, time. at least so this time we fair. know he's been in the house. That's fair. That's and not all he's done. <laughs> no, because we get to see this book again. Yeah. But every illustration in the book now has been replaced with drawings of what's happening in this film. Yeah. To the point where it keeps going past where we are. So we can't Correct. see it. So there's the car with missing wheels. There's yeah. the, the kids on the swings. There's the tea party with the cakes. Yeah. But then um, there's also the kids being dead yeah. and things like that, which we haven't seen yet or maybe. Won't. And these are crudely hand drawn, look like they're drawn kids by drawn. kids. Yeah. yeah. Obviously drawn by Big John. <laughs> Big John. <laughs> and so then they kind of they hear more noises, don't they? And the, somebody at the kitchen door this time. So Laura goes to investigate. And just as she does, she gets pulled through. Yeah. No, I didn't see the glass break. Did no, me you see the glass break? <laughs> there wasn't any glass in it, but because she gets pulled through it. So where did the glass in the door go? I, I don't know if it was the same one the doll came through. No, it wasn't. That came it through wasn't. a window. I've no idea then. I'm sure that came through a window. No idea. Because I've written here, Where did? why is there no glass in that door? Yeah. He pulls her through. He pulls, he, he John pulls, pulls Laura out. Straight through the door anyway. And the girls 
that are screaming again because that's what they got paid to do in this film. But then Kayla decides she needs to man up. She, she's the oldest because the mum's gone now. So she needs to step up. So she, she grabs the knife that Laura had left on the side yep. on the counter and she kind of looks through the door and all of a sudden you can hear Nick Knack Paddy Whack playing again. That was creepy. Yeah. The, yeah. This bit was creepy. So they're, 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 the kids are like, nah, we're taking it to this guy. Yeah. They're, Let's they're go out going there. for him. Yeah. We, we go, these kids are young. They're not like playing young. No. no they no. are really yeah, young Yeah, they kids. are, yeah. Um, Do you know they're really sisters as well? Are they really? Yep. Oh, wow. There you go. Good That's research. my contribution to the fact. <laughs> I didn't know that. Good research. So Kayla's like trying to... Pers- Maddie doesn't want to go. She's like, I'm not going anywhere. So Kayla persuades her by saying, well, you can carry the knife. Yeah. If you want. I'll go in front, unarmed. You can go behind me with the knife. And so they, they kind of head outside and they follow the noise of this song that's playing. And it's coming from Sean's car. Yeah. So they think, oh, my dad's here. So they don't know he's dead yet. So the car has now got inside the gate. So he's moved the car as well. Yeah. John. Yes. <laughs> he's, I'll tell you, he has been very, very busy. <laughs> uh, and he's not had much time to do that. And he's also not got the keys because Laura's got them. Yeah, but he's took her. So, wow. That so has, he has that moved has, really so fast. In the time it's taken Kayla to move, to give Maddie a knife. Yep. He's moved a car from, he's opened a gate. Yep. Moved a car, drove it up to the house. Yep. <laughs> he's dragged her. Yeah. To the into car. Into the car. Because we find out she's in the boot in a minute. He's unlocked the gate. Yeah. Driven the car back up. We're literally 10 seconds from <laughs> the moment that Laura was pulled out of the house. Yep. It's fast. <laughs> I've said this before, and I'm sure I will say it again when we're talking about these films. I just want something to stick to its own rules. And this is a prime example of a film. It just does whatever the fuck it wants <laughs> just to suit situations. Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It is That ridiculous. he's been able to do all this stuff. Yeah. It really took me out it's of it. It's not even like there's two of them and they're working together. No. It's literally just him. Anyway, the song the song is coming from the car and the girls like run to it because they think their dad's finally turned up. But he's not there, obviously. He's not in the car because he's dead. They don't know that. And they, do they hear knocking from the boot or they hear something they from yeah. the boot? So they head around to the back of the, the car and Laura's in there. She's all tied up in the boot. She's got like red string tied around her face. Yeah. Don't know what the red, the significance of the red string is. That's never so she's, she's been gagged and she's got, yeah, she's got a load of the red string just, just tied around her webbed head. around her head. Yeah. So the girls try and unmask, untie her. They use their knife, don't they, to get the cell, she's got a cell tape over her mouth. Yeah. They use the knife to break that. But then the man comes, the masked man comes, John, and the girls kind of run away and leave their mum to it. Leg like it back to the house like again. Leg it back to the house again. But in the meantime, Laura gets an axe in the chest. Yeah. So like it, heavy into it, like the, it's in the hip and kind of hip area. Yeah, she's on her side. And so the girls the girls run off and, and John just buries an axe and buries the axe into Laura's hip. Yeah. So the, the photo earlier is completely insignificant now because yeah. he left her intact in the photo. Yeah. But did not. So he chases after the girls. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they make it back up to the bedroom. Yeah. Where do you hide in a horror film? In the bedroom. Where in the bedroom? The wardrobe. Under the bed. Yep, under the bed, correct. <laughs> Before they get there, they see Sean on the porch. They do, yeah. They, they do notice that yeah. their dad's dead and got no eyes. Well, you now. would, wouldn't you? Yeah, so horror movie trope number 604, they hide under the bed. I quite like this bit. I must admit, I did quite really? like this. Yeah, I did. Which, but what did, um, go on, expand. What did you like? Which he, bit? He's kind of looking for them. Yes. So he looks in the wardrobe first, because that's the first place you'd look. And then... He obviously realizes that they're under the bed. Mm-hmm. So he sits on the bed and he just starts talking to them. And he says, he's, I've written down bits of what he said. He says, it's it's okay to be scared because I'm a scary guy. He doesn't say that, but that's, <laughs> that's the implication. Um, he tells them his name, which is John. He tells them that he grew up in the house. Um, he's been watching them for a very long time. The book that they have is his. He left it there. And then, then he says, there is a darkness all around you, but it is not a shadow. The darkness is me. That's just bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Don't know. That's why I well, liked it. Also, it's so funny. <laughs> I mean, think of Christian Bale's Batman voice. Yeah, multiplied by a hundred. Yeah, he's got that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what this guy sounds like. Yeah, and as he says, "The darkness is me." He grabs the bed and tips it up. He does. He flips it over. Flips it over. So they're just lying on the floor now, and he gets. He's got like. A, I presume it's like chloroform or yeah. something. It, that's what I took, yeah. 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 And so he suffocates the two girls. Yeah, he knocks, puts, them out. knocks them unconscious with this ra- wet rag. And then we cut to the next morning. And we get some nice... The sun's out. The sun's come out, which doesn't happen in these sort of films. So it was nice to see. And that was possibly the only, dare I say, not clever. That's probably giving it too much credit. <laughs> but I quite liked 
that yeah, they the hinted at all film. the way through. We just got to get through till morning because yeah. that again, that's a horror movie thing. Yeah, we've got to get through till morning. And no, this this doesn't ha- is doesn't still matter. going on. It's still in the in middle the of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And because you think well, as soon as the sun comes up in a horror film, it's usually the end of the film. Correct. Whereas yeah. in this case, it isn't yet. Um, and we see the same shots that we saw at the beginning of the film. So you see both cars, one without any wheels on. Uh, the axe, the blood dripping from the, blood axe, handle. From the yeah. axe handle, which is still in the boot, which is still in Laura, which is yeah, <laughs> which that's been a while. That's been yeah. in there now. And we, the tea party's been set up again, but not in the same place. No, he's in like a clearing now. So he's somehow managed to move those tree stumps, or chop another tree, or down. chop another tree down. But he's had some time now because they are by the there. lake, aren't they? No, they're almost. right by the lake now, which is at the back of the house. Yeah. so they're right near the house as well. And all the creepy dolls are there. Yeah, the, so he's moved all the them. life size. Yeah, creepy dolls from earlier. They're all sitting around having a bit of a tea party, and John's setting them up into like a tableau kind of thing, isn't he? And then we notice that Laura's still alive. Yes. She's kind of heavy breathing in the back of the truck still, trunk still. He heads over to the doll of Maddie because the dolls are representatives of. Can we talk about the daddy doll? The daddy doll. <laughs> the dolls are representative of the four. Yeah, of the family. Yeah, d- talk d- about the daddy doll at me. So I don't think this was clear, like when Sean's body fell off the roof and stuff. Yeah. But uh, he has amputated Sean's arms yeah. and appended them to this life-size doll. Yes. So, so the life-size doll's got real arms. Got real man arms, yeah. <laughs> real man arms. <laughs> yeah, and, which is weird because then he heads over to the Maddie doll. But I don't think it had eyes because he carved out Sean's eyes. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. I think it did have eyes. Uh, maybe it did. Maybe I missed that. Maybe they were Sean's eyes. No, they weren't human eyes. But he heads over to the Maddie doll and he starts cutting. He heads over to Maddie because the girl, girls are unconscious on yep. the floor next to where he's working. And he kind of measures how big her eyes are. He does, yeah. With his knife. And then he goes back to the Maddie doll and starts cutting its eyes out. Yeah, it's carving. The, the, wooden the wooden head Yeah, cuts its eyes out, which was a bit weird. Okay, we noticed at this point that Kayla's also awake. She's kind of starting to stir. Starting around, to stir. Yeah. So he heads over to the Kayla doll and he chops off the arm of the Kayla doll. Yeah, which it's like stuffed. It's yeah, stuffed like, with like straw, yeah, isn't just, it? Yeah, it's like a bit of fabric, yeah. So he chops off its arm and then he heads back over to the girl. So Kayla's pretending to be asleep by this point again. And he goes as if he's going to chop her arm off. Yeah, to put it on this doll. Yeah, but something distracts him. He kind of, Just as he's raised the axe up. It's fucking weird, this bit. Great I'm, time, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling with this because it's really weird. Yeah, something distracts him and it turns out it's like the sound of a music box. It is. Which we'd seen Sean by earlier on. So we're getting a bit of a callback. And so he, he kind of walks towards it and as he's walking back towards, because it's coming from the car where Laura is, he's noticing some other presents on the floor that have been unwrapped. Yeah, so it's the presents that Sean, Sean had, had bought, brought so from bought, the gas station. So yeah. He brought a teddy bear, yeah. which John picks up. There was something else. I think so it was, it was two bottles of wine. Yeah, yeah. It was two bottles of wine. So he picks them up. And then he gets to the car and the Laura's not in the boot anymore. Correct. So he kind of looks in and the music box is playing. And Laura kind of axes him from behind. She comes up behind him. Yeah. Hits him with an axe. With one arm. With one arm. She, no, not because it's been taken off. But she's like holding a side where yeah, she's, she's got this. She's had an axe in her all night. Yeah, exactly. It hurts. So they have a bit of a scuff on it. She's got a knife as well. So she's stabbing him in. Is the... it a knife? I didn't know it was a bit of glass or a knife. Something like, like that. I'm not sure what it was. She was stabbing him in the leg with something. She stabbed him a couple of times in the leg. They, they have a bit of a scuffle. She, she, he gets a few hits on her as well. She kicks him in the nuts. She does kick him in the nuts. And as he turns away, she manages to axe him in the back. Yeah. And he goes down. And she's really sort of pushing it in there. Yeah, she kind of buries it in. So he's done. He's down. He's out. End of John. She took care of him pretty easily. She took him all down all. straight away, yeah. Considering she'd had an axe in her all night. Yeah. <laughs> she took him straight down. Didn't like that. <laughs> so anyway, she heads over. she heads over to the girls... Um, they're both awake now, and they get back to the car. They head back to Sean's car. Yep. Drive away. Um, he's still there. He's still on the floor. And then they drive a bit further, and Kayla says, Mummy, where's he gone? Yeah. And you kind of look back, and John's not on the floor anymore. And the film ends. Yep. I get the impression you didn't like this very much. I thought <laughs> this was hot garbage. It was hot garbage. I I thought it was fun, There's, but not in the way that it should be. Because it was fun to watch as a car crash of a film. And I like that sort of thing. So I did enjoy it. But because it's shit. It's I really bad. I enjoyed it. I, there are I, creepy I, bits in it. And there are there, some there jump are a couple of creep, There and, are a couple of creepy bits in and it. And it's quite... Some people would be scared of it. Yeah. Because it is quite... It's really tense at some points. I also clearly think it is a film that did fall apart at the seams. Yeah. Because... I, I know it sounds like... 
don't want to sound like I'm being really like movie critic, anal and picking it apart. But I, some of it has to make some more sense than it did. Yeah. In terms of the amount of stuff this guy was able to do in seconds yeah. flat, it really annoyed me. I also thought this film was really mean. Like I so said, that's why I <laughs> used that. Re- uh, I don't know if I don't know if I've changed over the years, but I I I just found this horrible. It was horrible. Those two I girls must have been. I didn't distraught after they yeah, finished I filming it. There was find it entertaining. They never stopped screaming all the way through it. I did find it entertaining. I was I, entertained by it. I didn't. I don't think any of the protagonists were portrayed as strong. No. I didn't. The, the, that the, goes for Laura what as made well. Me laugh the most is there's a complete lack of motive. It's completely that scene at the beginning where Owen says, "Oh, this kid used to live here, and then he's gone missing." That's so bolted on. Yeah. To the point where, why is this kid who's gone missing now a fucking creepy masked axe murderer? Yeah. What? Who's like seven foot tall? <laughs> yeah. And built like a. And why has he waited all these years? Because he's a fully grown man now. Why has he waited all these years to turn into a psycho? Yeah. There's no explanation of who he is or what his motive is. And why these guys who have been coming here for years and years and years, years. all of a sudden, why is he taking them out? Why do it now? (laughs) Why has he got a photo of them where he's left Laura intact, but he's killed the other? Because I thought they were going to go with, oh, he's in love with Laura. He's been watching her for years. He's stalking her. He's going to take out the rest of them. They didn't do that. He, He axes Laura. Kill Sean and leaves the two girls alive. Yeah, I I really he didn't make with any this. effort I, to kill I, those two girls. He he could have easily killed those two yeah. girls. I d- I didn't. What were the dolls all about? Yeah, why, why was he, he trying to make this tea party? Doll? Yeah, I, I d- why is he recreating humans out of body parts and wood? I just I just really struggle with this. I I didn't get much entertainment <laughs> it's, about it. I it's th- stupid. It's really it's pa- such a paint by numbers stalker s- slasher film. And, but, but then it but didn't. It, it, it didn't I go didn't, all in with the gore and stuff no, because no, there's it, hardly any it like it cuts away. You never see any. I'm not, I'm not saying I want to see it, but it you do d- see when Owen gets his head. Yeah, but that's it. In. You but don't that's the only bit you do. You see. don't see. You don't see Sean anything with Sean. You don't. Look, look, you see the axe going to Laura. So it's, it's a confused chest. movie. It doesn't know. It doesn't know what it is. How where it's supposed to take this and some of the bits that were supposed to be tense. I don't, I, when those wheels fell off that car, <laughs> oh, so funny! It was like a watching a circus. And it, it, just the way it was filmed, it was oh, ridiculous. And that laughing, yeah, I just got me this, so this giggling about? every time he was chasing after them. I think it was supposed to be him because he was obviously supposed to be this like childlike. But it was like a a small girl girl giggling. Yeah, and then when he talks later on, and that made me laugh a little bit as well because he <laughs> exactly. opens his mouth and he's like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Yeah, I didn't need to hear him talking. I did love I that line. I lo- the, that line about being the darkness around you. I loved that. That's so corny and fucking and cheesy as fuck. I don't know if it's because as well, we watched a film in Hush that, is that did this. So much better. So much better. So, even to and an it, extent as well, um, the other one, the one that's at number two in the table. What Keeps You Alive. What Keeps You Alive. That's similar again, similar vein. And even that's better. But yes, but that's more of a character piece because yeah, character there's piece. motive. This there's... Is, if you compare slasher film to slasher film, then there's no contest between Hush and this at all. You've got a, why one of the reasons why Hush was so effective was because the villain in that, the mask guy in that, was believable. Yeah, you understood his motive. You knew what who he was, what he was, and then uh, the lead. So the I can't remember the character's name. The late the the, the lady I mean, in was Hush. Was she called Maddie? I'm not sure. I think she was called Maddie. I think she might have been. No, I'm positive she was. She grew in the film. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. you started off with her as in, you know, she was not confident. She didn't know where she was going with this book and what ending it was going to have. And that grew f- with her through the film. And yeah. she struggled through the film. She didn't have any of this last or oh, superhero rush of strength. <laughs> yeah. It was realistic. And that's what made it creepier. And this just threw all of that out the window. Yeah. And you're you're right. That's a great word. To, it was, it was lazy. It, it, it really was, is. It's as if somebody's gone. Oh, a make mess. us a slasher film, and it's just like okay, we'll have no scripts. We'll just have this. It, it is a Friday the Thirteenth ripoff. You can't get around the fact that that guy is Jason. Yeah. A hundred percent is Jason, with no backstory and no motive. But it's just a creepy big tall guy in a mask. You have to compare it to those sort of films, the, the Mike Myers, the Jasons. I love those sort of films. So I have, I have got some time for this, but it's a really bad example of a slasher film. Yeah. But it had its charms. I did quite... I thought I enjoyed it a lot more until I've spoken to you about it today. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I must admit. I, I just think, like, you know, you had, again, things like the Creepy Nursery Rhyme. I've seen oh. it so many times. It reminded me of, what's the one with, the, is it Jeepers Creepers? Yeah. So, again, it's an old song playing slowly. Guy, big guy in a mask. It's yeah. just, like... It's every horror movie Come trope. on, guys. Every slasher movie trope you can think of. Is what year was this from, did you say? 2018? Yeah. I, there are much better examples out there. Yeah. There's much better I feel like this sort of thing was 10 a penny 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, there's much better examples out there. There's much better examples on Netflix. And there's a much better example on our list. But it's just fun. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Nah. But I, for I, the, I enjoyed it for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. But you, I, I enjoyed it because watching. I, 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 I like watching films fall apart at the seams. I yeah. enjoy watching that. I sort definitely of thing. did that. And it did do that. But they, they the had end, nothing like, to do. They, none of the... Th- so either no. of the kids or... or, <laughs> or uh, Laura, Yvonne Strachinkowski had nothing to do in this film. No. Uh, like you just said, apart screaming. from just running around screaming. Yeah, that's all they did. There was no Literally. thinking to it. Again, like in Hush, she developed a plan. She used what she had around yeah. her. She, you know, uh, there was a cleverness to it. Yeah. Th- nothing like that in this. No. Both male it's characters just... died instantly. Yeah. Without any sort of screen time. Sean had only ever been on the phone. And then... He was... The guy... So, John, was he was invincible in this. And then suddenly... Yeah, it was Jason. And then all uh, of a suddenly sudden... Suddenly she finished him off in the really back easily. So simply. Yeah, I can't see you getting 10 of these films. <laughs> there are Jason, uh, Friday the 13th films. No. Really can't. No, I, I, I... I'm not saying this is the worst thing we've seen. No, it's nowhere near the worst thing we've seen. But it's one of the things I, I have enjoyed watching least. Really, that's yeah, I just, me. I just, I, I whilst I was watching it, it I was like, I'm not being, enjoying this. I enjoyed it just because it was, like I said earlier, I like watching films fall apart. It seems, and it's, it's just, it entertains me when things shit. Well, films are shit. Well, I like watching yeah, shit films. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> and and we've we've seen a few of them this year. Let's so like let's so for example, we watched the anomaly the other week. That's a shit awful. Shit film. Absolutely terrible. That's a shit shit film. But I quite enjoyed how bad that was. <laughs> that's I d- that's I didn't how I hate, feel on this. I one. didn't hate watching that. I I, I really didn't. I, whilst I was watching this, I was like, I really don't like this. I'll turn this off. I wouldn't watch <laughs> really? this if I didn't. Have so that's to watch how it. I was with the anomaly. Yeah, that's really weird that we had that exact opposite feeling. Yeah, because that's exactly. This isn't my genre either. I don't. It like is mine. This. It's completely mine. But yeah, the anomaly for me was a shit shit film. Whereas this yeah. is a half decent shit film. Whereas you, with it, with the opposite on it, yeah. you think that that the anomalies are half. The anomaly is one of the worst films I've ever seen. Oh I'm yeah, yeah, same. By that. But and this isn't. But I didn't. I, I didn't. <laughs> at no point was did I want to turn that off, and I wanted to see what happened, even I'd though it was terrible. Turn the anomaly off happily. I knew within t- fifteen minutes of this, I was like, no, <laughs> no. I didn't get that. Surprises me. me that you hated it that much. I, I just thought it was f- fun. I just I love watching things like this. Just shit, shit films. That's just who I am, I guess. I just like that sort of... Fair enough. Have you got a trivia question for me? Uh, yeah. Whose turn is it to go first? I can't remember. Shall I go first? Yeah, I think Because I've only got one. And if... no, I've got two, but you've already answered one of them. Was it Knickknack Paddywhack? Yeah, although I think it's called This Old Man. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to quit. <laughs> Apologies. I, I have a feeling you might ask my second one, but um, go on. We'll, let's we'll, hope not. Let's risk it. <laughs> I literally I couldn't think of anything and then this thing popped up on the screen I was like well there's my question and okay. I think that you probably might have done the same but I don't know right um the book yeah is it the, is it going to be the I question? think it's going to be the same question <laughs> right. you keep getting questions right because of what I was going to ask you yeah because uh-huh. they're the same because we write the same questions down what was the name of the book Nick the book Adam was called Darkness Hides it was it depresses me so much. And now you haven't got a question for me. No. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, right, give me a second. Okay. You might have to um, cut this down. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be quiet for. Okay, have you got one? Yeah, I've got one. I've got one. Okay. So uh, when Laura goes out to look for her phone in the car yeah. and she finds the little doll in the back seat. Yeah. It is wrapped in uh, wrapping paper. It is. He's wrapped it up as well. What colour is the wrapping paper? Um, It's like a metallic red, pinky red kind of colour. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. I, I, right. Well, no, I don't think it was very red. <laughs> it was, I, I, it was I, I thought it was more a pinky purpley, but I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, it was, meta- it was yeah, definitely it was, metallic. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was foil type. Proper full foil. That, does that make it 7-5? Yes. Wow. We're only five episodes left. Yeah. Getting to the crunch point of the trivia. What happens to the winner? What does the winner? I don't know. <laughs> we need to come up with that. I don't know. Just bragging rights, probably. That's I don't fine. Know. Maybe we could think of a prize. You can have some stickers. 
I've got, I've got loads of them. them. <laughs> I don't need any more. I've got so many of them. If anybody wants any stickers, just drop us a message on any of the socials and we'll send you some out. If you'd have told me a month ago, I'd get five in a row, right? You need to step you're not your getting game up. them right. You're just asking the same question, writing down the same questions. I'm not sure you're not reading my notebook. <laughs> That's really annoying me. That's five weeks in a row you've done that, pretty much. Should we talk about the stream table? Yes, let's have an argument. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a massive argument. Where are we looking? Yep. Uh, well, quite near the bottom, I would have said. Oh, shit. Okay, so you want me to... Wow. There's a lot of films on this table now. <laughs> okay, so I'm not I'm not going to say it's in the bottom couple. Okay, it's definitely not... Um, It's above the anomaly, so let's knock that out. Yeah, like I say, I, the anomaly is terrible. I don't know how that's not at the bottom of this table. Really uh, Buster's My Heart was loads worse. Okay. Blackwater in Clinical in 15th and 16th? It's not as bad as Blackwater. No, it's not. Clinical in the Clapper, 15th and 14th. I'd have it. I, I, this is the area I'm looking at. Um, okay. I'm, I'm drawn Tell to me our, where you want it. I'm drawn to our old friend. The Clapper. The Clapper. <laughs> How does the... Episode 4 the Clapper was. So there's like 16 episodes ago and we're still talking about it. Um, it's an awful film as well, and it slowly creeps up this table. Do you want to tell me? But my, so my initial, my snap judgment yeah. is that I would have this um, underneath the clapper, above clinical. Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm not going this far up. I'm just looking what's on there. <laughs> Which would be, uh, what would that be? That would be 14th, 14th out yeah. of 20. Yeah. I don't think I'm far away from you, you know. It's, it's a weird little area of the table, this. Bernie Sands... I still think it's too high on this table. It's in a 10 at the minute. You know the musicals at 11, Christmas break-ins at 12. They're two like family movies. Then you've got The Resort, which is not half, not all that bad, but pretty bad. It's better than this. Do you think? The Resort is better than this film. Yes, it's better than he's out there, I would say. I don't think I'm far away from you here. I I, I think this is the big difference between us, is that I I will be... So I would I'm far more forgiving for something like The Resort because although it was stupid and didn't make much sense either, it kind of knew it because it was Jurassic Park with the zombies. Yeah. Whereas this is serious. Yeah. I think and I'm, it falls, just falls down massively I'm for me. I'm much more forgiving of this genre of film, I think. I think that's probably where I fall down. Yeah. I, re- I enjoy slasher films and these like mis- mass mystery men films. I enjoy that sort of thing. So any of them, just i just enjoy watching i I don't i'm not against a good one we've got one at number one we have got one at number one. <laughs> you know or you know we saw the brave babysitter a couple of weeks ago yeah it's the same sort of genre it's not a million miles away in terms of genre but again it played it for laughs and it stuck to it all the way through this is just all over the place do you know what uh, I'm, I'm scrolling through this table now i've got f- literally no idea where i want to put it okay. i cannot see what's where your, it fits what's your into gut? this table i have just, got one <sighs> Burning Sands throws me in this midsection because it should not be that high up. Um, uh, Burning Sands was a d- decent film, isn't it? It's just, it's out of our wheelhouse. I f- think it goes in the middle of those two family films we've got, <laughs> which is weird. I think it's better than Christmas Break In, but I don't think it's quite as polished as Emo the Musical. And where did you put it? Below the clapper. Yeah. So you've got the clapper, the resort, and the Christmas Break In above it. Yep. That's interesting because I always think that. The way I look at this table is that there is a big gap between the clapper and everything else above it. Yeah, there is. I, and I would firmly have this in the shit section <laughs> of the series, which for me is the clapper down. Would you concede on the clapper up if we put it up just above the clapper below the resort? Because I would, I can put it there if you're willing to let me. Um, this is a better thing <laughs> than the clapper. It is a better thing <laughs> than the clapper. I, I didn't want to turn the clapper off. It's the clap is terrible. <laughs> I didn't. Fun. I wanted to turn this film off. I really didn't. Well, one of us is going to have to give in. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> I'm not having it as high as you've said. I, no, I, I'm, I'm prepared to put it. Yeah, I, above the clapper and below the result. I, I would take that deal. That's. Are you sure? That's fine. Yeah. I, I definitely wouldn't have this as high as uh, uh, twelfth. So fourteenth. Thirteenth, you said above the clapper. Above, yeah. Sorry, above the clapper. Thirteenth. Unlucky for some. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I'm happy with that. The, the resort is a better film overall. As a film, it is a better film. Yeah, but the clapper isn't. Agreed to disagree. <laughs> I I didn't get We're any enjoyment out of this. Like I say, I didn't get any I just, enjoyment out of the clapper. Well, <laughs> me neither. But I, yeah, but then a, a crap comedy I would find easier to watch than a crap horror film. That's the difference between me. And yeah, you. that that you no, not that right in the head there. <laughs> 
That's the difference between me and you. So we shall agree to put it above the clapper okay. below the resort. Deal. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. All that leaves us to do then is pick next week's film. Let's do it. See if we can get something that we might agree on this time. <laughs> uh, let me find the randomizer. Here it is. Let me press the button. Here it goes. The sound is not on. Standard. Again. <laughs> it's because I turned the volume off when we're talking and I need it on. The Endless. Do you have any idea what The Endless is, Nicholas? Uh, hopefully it does end. <laughs> it is Endless. <laughs> has no end no i don't know sounds well it could be anything have yeah, a guess endless love <laughs> do you want to hear the synopsis yes please as kids they escaped a ufo death cult of course now two adult brothers seek answers after an old videotape surfaces and brings them back to where they began oh that's vague <laughs> very vague do you want to watch the trailer yes please was told that they were all going to kill themselves. That's why we left the cult. They sent us a video. Whoever's watching, I just wanted to say the ascension is something that we've all been looking forward to. We couldn't be happier. I want to go back. One day, one night, we come straight back. Good to see you two. And what the Dickens brings you all the way out here? Just thought we'd visit while you're uh, here. We're always here. I used to make a lot of your clothes. You remember that? They're all in like their 40s. They just look young. It's weird. Why come back now? The video you sent. What video? next we can't go back to our lives knowing that there's actually something out here it doesn't let me sleep it doesn't let me dream oh, what? there's something down there if you let it control you it's gonna control you over and over again we're all stuck in these things we couldn't be happier happier here. There's something out here, isn't there? That looks like nothing we've seen so far. That looks cool. It does look interesting, doesn't it? That looks fun. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. It's on for a bit longer than our normal. You notice that every, no, almost every film we does is on for an hour and a half. I, I know. That is not planned. <laughs> it's it's not is... planned. It's so weird. This one's on for 151. So it's a little bit longer. We need to find some extra time. <laughs> that looks. That looks. Uh, I know we've been burnt by trailers before many times, but that looks promising. It does yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. So go out this week and watch the Endless, and we will be back next week to talk about it. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.